Welcome to my deep dive learning path where I show you everything about AWS Lambda extensions to more easily integrate Lambda with your favorite tool. I'm Julian Wood, a senior developer advocate for serverless at AWS. This video is part of a whole series. If you're wanting a good grounding on what Lambda extensions are, start at the first video to get up to speed. In this video, I'm going to be taking a deeper look at external extensions and how they work. An external extension runs as an independent process. This is separate from the runtime process, but still within the execution environment that isolates your Lambda function from other functions. You can see the process boundaries here. An external extension runs outside of the function invocation. It can start before the runtime process and continues to run after the function invoke is fully processed. It still freezes as part of the execution environment if there were no pending invokes. Because external extensions run as their own processes, you can write them in a different language than the function. For this reason, we recommend that you implement external extensions using a compiled language. In this case, the extension is a self-contained binary that is compatible with all of the supported runtimes. If you do use a non-compiled language, ensure that you bring your own runtime within the extension to run the process. A simple way to show Lambda extensions in action is to just look on a normal Lambda function. I have a function here, I have no Lambda layers, but if I was to go down and select this one of the advanced monitoring tools and enable advanced monitoring, this tells me it's going to use CloudWatch Lambda Insights. And Lambda Insights actually under the hood uses Lambda extensions to gather some advanced telemetry data about function uh, invocations. <clears throat> So once I have that, uh, that done, if I then go and look at the <clears throat> Lambda function, I can see that a Lambda layer has been added, and this has been added as the Lambda Insights extension using the version on. So I'm now consuming the capabilities of an extension without even realizing I'm using an extension. And you can think of this as how a tool would be able to plug into Lambda and just be able to add itself to your functions and be able to gather telemetry data. If I was, for this example, going to then uh, test this function, run a number of invocations, if I was then to head over to CloudWatch and to the performance monitoring path under Lambda Insights, I would be able to see the CPU usage and the network usage, which is something that the Lambda Insights Lambda extension is able to give me. So this is an example of using an extension and just behind the scenes, Lambda Insights is using Lambda extensions to provide the functionality. To show some more external extension functionality, I have a great demo which works with AWS AppConfig. If you're not aware, AppConfig is a systems manager feature that allows you to deploy configuration settings to infrastructure, including Lambda. What makes AppConfig super useful and cool is being able to carefully introduce changes to your application that can only be tested with production traffic using robust deployment and testing capabilities to ensure that your new configuration changes are deployed safely. The AppConfig extension runs as a separate local web process which caches information data from AppConfig and makes it available to the function. The function then makes a local HTTP call to retrieve the latest AppConfig setting from the extension, which makes it super fast and doesn't require any AppConfig CLI command within the function. You configure which AppConfig settings to retrieve as Lambda environment variable. Here's the link to the GitHub repository, which includes a number of extension demos. If you browse AWS samples and then to AWS Lambda extensions, you will find the AppConfig demo extension, which is deployed using AWS SAM, our serverless infrastructure as code tool. Jumping to VS Code, you can see there's an application which deploys all the components, and this is stored in a SAM template. This consists of a Lambda function, and this runs Node.js, and it has a Lambda layer added, which is the app config publicly available on, which is stored in the template as a configuration parameter. A SAM deploy then deploys all the infrastructure for the application, which I've run through already to save some time for the demo, although it doesn't really take long. We can see various app config things deployed, as well as a Lambda function and associated IAM roles. So jumping to the deployed app config configuration. This is where you can configure a number of app config features for doing those safe deployments. Here you can see <clears throat> there is what's called a hosted configuration version. And I've used this to store a log level value of normal. And you can see that within the content. 
Now, jumping onto my Lambda function code, this returns the event, whether it's a cold start and the log level value from app config. The function has an environment variable, which is configured here, which specifies that we want to use the app config log level configuration setting. The extension has access to the same environment variables as the function. We can see the Lambda function has a Lambda layer configured. This was added during the SAM deploy and uses the app config publicly shared layer on. Now, remember the function code is going to make a local HTTP call to receive the app config configuration. There's no AWS SDK or CLI installed. It's making a local call, which we can see here, which is fast. The extension behind the scenes is caching the information from app config. If I then do a test function invocation, which I set up here, I could also test this locally using SAM. Once the function is run, we can see here that the log level returned from app config is what we saw in the app config console as normal, and the cold start value is set to true. If I run the function again, we see the same value returned from app config extension, but now the function cold start is false. It's doing a warm start. Heading back to the app config console, I create a new hosted configuration version and I change the log level to verbose. Once that is created, I then go about deploying the change. I could use many of the many features of app config to test the rollout of this deployment, either using tested land functions or various deployment strategies. I'm gonna keep it simpler and deploy the change immediately. So I can watch the deployment status until my deployment of the new version with verbose logging is complete and as the function currently deployed version is version number two, which you can see over here. So heading back to the Lambda console, I run another test invoke. I can now see that the log level has been updated to verbose. The extension has seamlessly cached the updated config. But also note the cold start is still false. This is a warm start. I've deployed a configuration change to a Lambda function without having to update the function with an environment variable and redeploy the function. For a single function, it would be very easy, but think how you can use this to update hundreds of functions with a config change, maybe based on a metric you're picking up and not have to redeploy. The next invocation, even a warm start, gets the updated configuration from the Lambda extension. So you saw how the Lambda extension communicated with the external app config service, providing a handy outer function code mechanism to synchronize the data with the external service. Lambda uses a local HTTP GET to retrieve the configuration, which is simple and fast. So we went through external extensions and how they work as separate processes still within the Lambda execution environment, how they can start before the runtime, continue running during the function invocation, and continue after the runtime is finished processing the invocation. And being a separate process, how an external extension can be written in a different language, and if it's a self-contained binary, is then compatible with all runtimes. And the demo of the app, app config extension to bring it to life, which does use a combined binary. In the next video, I'm going to be taking a deeper look into the Lambda lifecycle and how extensions gives you more visibility and control into how Lambda works. For plenty more information, head over to serverlessland.com with lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops, other learning paths, everything about serverless on AWS. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about Lambda extensions. My name is Julian Wood, and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.